What's up, my people? Today we are talking about how to ace your virtual job interview. Are you out there on the hunt? Are you looking for something better out there? Good. Join me, tune in, like, and subscribe, and I will give you the scoop on how to out position and outperform everybody else going out for that job. Okay, so let's get started. There's really three areas of focus we're gonna talk about today. One area is managing your environment, right? What is going on in your physical space for this interview? Two, managing yourself, all of the internal landscape, all of the, all of the story that is you. And three, managing the opportunity, which is about them. So let's begin. The first zone of influence is number one, managing your environment. Listen, here's the thing. If it's a virtual interview, it's not just you that's being interviewed. It's the space, right? They want to see what level of professionalism are you bringing here? Too often, I see people with crazy camera angles so that we're looking up their nose or so that they're looking down on the interviewer like this with a bit of a scowl. Listen, we're virtual, but that doesn't mean we're not human. And how do humans size each other up? They look for what? Strong eye contact. Right? Do you notice how I'm looking at you and not here? I'm looking at you. If you can get better at making eye contact when you're answering your questions during the interview, it will, it will separate you from the pack like that. And they'll be like, oh, wow, he or she or they really pop on screen. I'm, I'm intrigued. Now, does that mean I think you should do the whole interview like this? Well, listen, if you're talking to CNN and you're being interviewed on CNN, yes. If it's a satellite interview, this is how it's conducted. You listen to the question and you respond into the camera lens. But if it's a job interview, I think it's perfectly acceptable to stop looking at the lens when the other person is talking and look at their face to see what expression they have on their face. So you can kind of read them a little bit, right? But then when you answer, try answering into the camera lens. And if you're like, oh my God, I don't know how to do that. It's so scary. Listen, it's weird. It's not a cognitive skill that humans like have inherently. Making eye contact and convincingly connecting with an inanimate object is not exactly baked into our DNA. But I will tell you, it's just a skill like anything else. It just takes practice, right? Go on Instagram and do some stories where you're doing face to camera, eyeball to camera. Just practice, just play. It will instantly make you pop in an interview in ways that most people are not. So that's the first thing, eye contact. The other thing is height and light, right? When we meet someone for the first time, we wanna read them. Can I trust them? Do I find them trustworthy? Do I find them compelling? And if we're scowling down at someone because the camera's down here, or if we're like at the kid's table looking up because our camera lens up here, that is not instilling confidence and trust and connection. That's instilling like, something's weird about this, but I can't put my finger on it. So you know what I, what I did at the beginning of COVID? I took my laptop, and put like six or seven coffee table books under it so that I could be at eye contact. Now lighting, lighting is huge. If your face is in shadow or if there's a big, huge reflection on your glasses and they can't see your eyes, or if you look like a serial killer because you're sitting in pitch black, once again, they're not gonna feel super comfortable with you. So the way I like to do it is like ideally, you're facing natural light in an ideal world. You'd be facing natural light, but not everybody has that option. Worst case scenario, get a $20 ring light on Amazon. I mean, seriously, they cost next to nothing. Position it above your camera so that it shines directly onto your face and illuminates as much of your face as possible. Now, do you need to burn your retinas out? No, but just you wanna make sure that people can get a full view of your face. We are homo sapiens. We size people up based on scanning their facial expression because in a split second, our subconscious mind is deciding, are they friend or are they foe, right? So don't let camera height and light work against you in a job interview, okay? So in terms of managing the environment, we're talking about eye contact. We're talking about height and light. We're also talking about backdrop. Be mindful of what's behind you. I know you know this. I know you're like, ugh, eye roll, I know, lady. But it remains to be seen. If you've got like a half-consumed bottle of Jack Daniels in your background, that's gonna be a problem, right? Tidy up a little bit. My background isn't perfect, it's got some clutter, but it's generally speaking, 
Pretty cool, pretty basic, pretty clean. You don't want your background working against you in a job interview, okay? So that's fit step one. That's the sort of first area of focus is manage your environment. Make sure your environment is helping you in your interview and not holding you back. But let's talk about two, and that is managing yourself, your inner landscape, your inner narratives. Here's the thing. Every time we go into a job interview, there's all kinds of mental chatter. Will they like me? Will I like them? Am I enough? Am I up to this? Are they going to be able to tell how desperate I am for this job? Or are they going to be able to tell that I really don't care whether I get this job or not? Right? There's this constant mental chatter happening. What I want you to do when you're focusing on the internal landscape, pick a story that you will tell yourself about this interview. Because listen, all of our perceptions are shaped by the stories we tell ourselves. So if you go into an interview and the, and the story you're mentally telling yourself is these people are way too smart for me. I don't really belong here. This is going to be a disaster. You're going to perform per poorly. Your communication skills are going to be crap -a -roo. So what we want to do is replace a crappy narrative with a positive narrative, right? Maybe your mantra, maybe your mental narrative going into this interview is, you know what? Whether I get the job or I don't get the job, this is an opportunity for me to connect with another human to see if I can be of service. I mean, that is a great one because that that like kills a multitude of birds with one stone. God, multitude of birds, poor birds. That does a lot of things in one mantra. What it does is it grounds you. It grounds you in connecting with another human being instead of performing. When we're in performance mode, it tends to bring out kind of an inauthentic version of us. But when we're trying to connect with another human being, when we're trying to be of service, that brings out the best in us and it tends to calm us down too, which is a bonus. So feel free to write that one down. The last piece of managing inward is managing our own personal story, right? Every interview that we go into, the person across the table or the person on the other end of the Zoom is really wondering what's this person about? What's her story? What's his story? So if you haven't done the work of figuring out what your story is, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. These are the problems I like to solve. You're not ready for that interview. Now, does it have to be some harebrained long process to find that out? No. Think about what the job is. Think about what the job requires. And then think about how your experience leads you to be the perfect person for that job, right? Practice that story. I did this, then I did that, then I did this, and all of this gave me everything I need to do this at your organization. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it needs to be clear and it needs to be practiced, right? Okay, so those are like, we've talked about managing in, right? We've talked about clearing out the head garbage before you go in. We've talked about choosing a mantra, some positive narrative that you're gonna take in there with you. And we've talked about practicing your own personal story. What makes you the right guy, gal, or person for this gig? But let's get to step three, which I think might be the most important part, maybe, probably. And that is focusing on them, the other person with whom you're speaking, the company you are hoping to join and be of service to. This is where people tend to blow it. For some reason, we spend all our time talking ourselves up like, I'm good enough, I'm strong enough, and doggone it, I need to get this job, which is important. Of course it's important. I spend my life helping people do that. But it's not nearly as important as doing the homework on the company you're interviewing with. What are they about? What's been happening in the press? lately. Has the media been talking about them? The day of the interview, you should check the interwebs and see if anything has anything is broken in the news about this company. You want to know what they're about. And in fact, you should do a little research in terms of like when the press does cover this company, what are the positive things they say? When the press does come th cover this company, what are they skeptical about? What are the challenges this organization is facing? Now, everything I just told you is very appropriate for a corporate job. Those are things you're thinking about. What is this company about? What are they known for? What are their strengths and weaknesses? All of that is very available on the interwebs. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, girl, don't overbake this. I'm literally just trying to get a job at Phil's Coffee 
which God, I love Phil's Coffee. If you're going for Phil's Coffee, good for you. I freaking love that place. Anyway, if you're going to Phil's Coffee, you're probably less worried about their corporate image and the corporate story, but you need to be worried about what are they known for in terms of customer service? What do they expect their frontline colleagues to be presenting to the individuals that get their cup of coffee every morning, their mint julep? God, it's so good. What are, what is the ethos of their workforce. Do your homework, depending on the role that you're in. If you can roll up with such awesome knowledge of what the company is about and then ask smart questions, I mean, honey, you've got the gig. I'm not even kidding. So do your research, find out what their jam is, find out what they need help with to the best of your abilities and create a list of smart questions. The worst mistakes I see people make is they go in half-baked, they don't know who the hell they're talking to. They don't know anything about the company. They're clueless and all they've done is prepare prepare mentally. And the interviewer is like, well, geez, I'm real glad you're confident, but you don't know jack all about my business. Next caller. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's what I want you to focus on. I want you to focus on managing your environment. I want you to focus on managing in, managing your own internal landscape. And I want you to focus on managing out, getting a good sense of with whom you are meeting. What is this company about? What do they need? And I'm telling you, you will crush it. If this was helpful, please drop me a comment. I live for them. I'm trying so hard to get 2000 subscribers. So if you want to thank me, subscribing and telling your BFFs to subscribe would be the greatest way, the greatest love of all. Anyway, I hope you have a beautiful day. Go crush that interview and let me know how it goes. Shine on. We need your light.